So, do you guys do you guys think it's fair that some people define you by your actions? Do you think that's fair or unfair? Fair. I think it's pretty fair, all right? Even I think, it, it, and that's important for us as Christians, okay? As we as we uh, define ourselves as Christians, it's important that our actions follow that. Because if they don't, our, our actions are going to define us as something else. There's going to be a contradiction there, okay? Furthermore, it's even not even uh, extremely important that our actions reflect Christ, but even the perception of our action is important. All right. Even if you think you you know you're not doing something necessarily wrong, or you think that um, you know you're following Christ, the way people perceive you is extremely important. Okay. We're gonna watch a quick video to introduce um, the topic a little bit more, and then we're gonna get into some more of the meat. All right. Matt, would you play that video? Yes, man. Hey Sarah, how's it going? Hey, no doubt the shows. Okay, well, uh, back here you got a lot. I'm really sorry. Whoa, whoa, man, I'm man. Really sorry. No, 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 no. Calm down, calm down. Just calm down. Was I speeding? No. Was I speeding? No, no. Is there something going on? No, 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 no. I'm not going to check your little watchy checker thing. No, no, you, you've got to replace the light out back. Let me, let me, let me show you. I don't know what you're doing. No, 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 no. Again, I know that. You've said that a couple times already. What are you talking about? Going so far out of the truck. Hey, hey. Okay. We're going to replace a brand new word in life. No, no. You've got to replace the phone. But it's okay. It's so good. Sir, step out of your car. There's nothing wrong with this. No, 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 no. Sir, it's, it's. It's Grandma Manette the Macy. Oh, no, I can't even move your sir. Sir, put your hand up. Put. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now, now. And then that's how. Hey, excuse, excuse me. Okay, okay. <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir, it's good. Sorry, it's just the light! <laughs> Alright, so, let me see videos from people acting a little bit ridiculous. Right, and at the end it says, what do your actions say about you? Right, and, and undoubtedly your actions are going to speak uh, something about you. It's going to tell other people something about you. Right. Have you ever, you know, I guess it's, it's frustrating as a Christian. You ever see people, you know, they say, yeah, I'm a Christian, and they act something totally different. I mean, it's totally, it's embarrassing almost, right? I'll never forget, uh, me and Julie are, are on a honeymoon. Aww. Uh, oh, okay. It was, it was, it was, I guess. It was cool. So, uh, uh, should, <laughs> all right. We're in, we're in the Semi National Park, okay? And uh, we're walking around, and it's a beautiful place. And I'll never forget, we're, we're walking in this park. And, you know, you always hear people talk about road rage, but i never really seen anybody act like that ridiculous. But this is that one time where it was just, I, I mean, I'm watching this happen in front of me, and I'm just in awe about how anybody could act this ridiculous. And this, I don't know what happened, but we're at this intersection. We're in this national park, we're on our honeymoon, we're just walking, skipping, having this, the greatest time, smiling, and all of a sudden this guy gets out of his car and he starts screaming. I mean, I mean, there's like a hundred people around. There's like this park ranger volunteer, he must have been 16. I mean, he didn't know what he was doing. This guy gets out of his car and he, he starts pointing to the lady in front of her. She's like, her, her. And everyone's like, what, what, what's the big deal? She flipped me off. She flipped me the bird. And we're like, okay. I mean, I wouldn't appreciate that either, but it's not that big of a deal. I kind of get over it. And this guy is going insane. If you've ever, if you, if you, if you are up on the viral videos and you watch YouTube a lot, have you ever seen uh, uh, the, kid, the the dogs came bounding over video? I saw I got one. <laughs> I got one. I got one guy who's seen that video, so bad example, but Paul's connected with me. Right. Anyway, this guy's going insane, and I'm watching this guy. He begins to get in front of this lady's car, and he's like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Run me over? Run me over? And she's trying to, like, she's scared. You know, I don't know what caused it. Maybe she was going too slow, but she flicked him off, and this, this guy's going insane. He starts 
beating on the windshield, just start, you know, don't go donkey calling on it, and just start beating on it. And we're like, what are you doing? And then, and then the worst part happens. He's yelling and he's cussing her out, and he's like, I am a Christian man. And I was like, oh, no. Are you kidding me? Like, you just embarrassed everyone who's ever called themselves a Christian. This guy, I mean, like, his actions were so out of control. And, and then he goes to say, I am a Christian man. And we're like, me and Julia are just, our heads are down. We're like, you've got to be, you've got to be kidding me. All right. So we're talking about character uh, this month. The series is called Becoming. Um, I think John's, John's talked to you a lot about uh, how your actions reflect your character. I think last week I wasn't here. That's what I was told. We're going to kind of expound on that today. Uh, beginning of some of this meet. We're going to look at uh, we're going to look at Paul. Everyone know who Paul is? If you don't, I'm going to introduce you to him a little bit before we kind of get in the meat of it. I want to pray, and uh, we're going to, we're going to dive right in. Okay? You guys pray with me. Father, we love you. We praise you, man. I just, I'm thank you for each and every one of these students here. God, I know that you just uh, you want to speak to them. God, so I just pray that you would soften up their hearts, that they would be open to what you have to say to them. Father, that we would be uh, introspective tonight, that we would take a look, we would examine ourselves and how we're living, we would examine our actions, God, and we'd be able to, um, God, test ourselves uh, and test our faith, see if it matches up with what you've called us to do, who you've called us to be, Father. And I just pray that you would just anoint this time right now, that you would bless us here, and you just honor us with your presence, God. We ask all this in your name, amen. You're going to have to excuse me, I'm not good at speaking a long time, so... I have to get lots of water. So, we're going to look at this guy named Paul. Paul wrote uh, the majority of the New Testament. All right? And we're going to kind of look at um, Paul's actions, and we're going to kind of learn from him what that means as far as uh, being a Christian. Okay? So, if you guys have your Bibles, somebody give you a bunch of Bibles. Yeah, got, oh, man. You guys have to huddle up and share. Acts 22. Acts 22. If you got a smartphone, download like the Bible. It's the only time you can break out your phone during church. I did it next to an old person on Sunday and got really mad. <laughs> I think I offended them. She was like giving me all these crazy looks. And, um, bring your Bibles. You're going to need them, especially at church. We're, we're, we're going to look at some scriptures, okay? Acts chapter 22 is where we're at. We're looking at this guy named Paul. And uh, Paul, Paul is, wrote, again, like I said, he, he wrote most of the New Testament, all right? But before he did that, right, before he was a Christ follower, uh, Paul was, was a, a Christian persecutor, all right? If he had an Xbox Live account, his gamer tag would be like Christian Killer 66. That's, that's who he was, okay? That's who this guy was. That's what he did. He went around, and he, he didn't like Christians because it was, it was contrary to to, uh, you know, popular Jewish tradition and, and what they believe, okay? And so uh, a lot of things were changing um, socially, politically at the time, and so uh, Christians were viewed as a big disruption to, to common day Jewish things. So Acts chapter 22, at this point, um, Paul, they tried, the Jews tried to kill him. They were so mad at this guy, they tried to kill him. He's arrested, he goes, luckily there's some Roman soldiers there that, that stop him, they, they, they're dragging him off, and he gets arrested, he says, hold on, let me, let, me, let me give an account, let me tell you who I was, let me tell you about my actions, let me tell you about my character, who I was. He says, um, Acts chapter 22, he says to the Roman soldiers, he speaks Greek to them, and they're like, oh, this guy's pretty smart, he can speak Greek, he's not an Indian, we're going to let him talk. So he goes to the Jewish people, he speaks in Aramaic, he says, brothers, Fathers, listen now to my defense. When they heard him speak to them in Aramaic, they became very quiet. They're like, oh, he's one of us. All right? We can relate to this guy. Paul said, I am a Jew, born in Tarsus, uh, but brought up in this city. I was thoroughly trained in the law of our fathers and was just as zealous for God as any of you are today. He said, I was one of you guys. I was trained by, by one of the, the, the top priests of our day. Okay? I persecuted the followers of, the, of this way, and the way is capital there. He's, he's referring to... Uh, if you look back in John chapter 14, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. That's how Christians identified themselves. They identified that they were part of the way. Okay? Um, he was persecuting them all the way to their death, arresting both men and women and throwing them into prison. 
As also the high priest and all the council can testify, I even obtained letters from them to their brothers in Damascus and went there to bring these people as prisoners to Jerusalem to be punished. So he says, I was going after all these Christians. Okay, I was on my way to Damascus. I had like, basically like a warrant from the government that said, I, I have the right to go arrest these people for being Christians. Okay? Uh, I was on my way there. As I was on my way there, about noon, as I was going near, I was traveling to the city, a bright light from heaven flashed around me. I fell to the ground, heard a voice say to me, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He's like, what? Who, who, who said that? Lord? And so he, he gets this idea like, was that just God who spoke to me? And if it is, that's not good because he just said, I'm doing the opposite of what he wants me to do. Okay? So we have this account of Paul. We're going to learn from his actions here. This is who he was before he was Christian, before he was in Christ. Okay? His actions defined him. They defined who he was. Again, he was, he was Christian Killer 66. That's, that's who this guy was. That's what his, you know, his screen name would be. That defined him. His actions defined him. And he's trying to convince these people and you know, show them who he is. Okay? See, Paul had a huge flaw in his character. He thought by, by <coughs> persecuting Christians, he was going to please God. Okay? And I think that's um, pretty indicative of your jet your generation, our generation. As humans, we're all pretty flawed, are we not? Every one of us are flawed, okay? Even the writer of the New Testament was extremely flawed. The smallest flaw is going to cause huge, huge disasters, okay? Uh, space shuttle in 2003, one flaw, the flaw was in the exhaust. The, the, the insulation foam, we would think a minor detail, caused the death of seven people, the whole space shuttle exploded. Ask, ask Toyota about flaws, all right? <laughs> a few things go wrong, gas pedal doesn't stop, a bunch of cars are crashing, it's going to cause a big deal, just a tiny flaw, okay? These flaws in our life, if not dealt with, are going to end up bringing on huge repercussions, okay? So, as we look at Paul, we see, man, he has a flawed character, and each and every one of us are flawed. All right. Before Christ, he was a totally different person. He was identified before Christ. Okay, I'm sorry. Before he was a Christian, he was identified as someone totally different. Totally different. After Christ, we're going to see a little bit as we jump. Someone, a whole new person. Okay, whole different person. I want you guys to go to Colossians, uh, chapter. Where am I? Colossians chapter three, and we're going to be there for the rest of the rest of the night. All right. Colossians chapter 3, if you guys have your Bible. I should have put the... Uh... Colossians 3, I'm there. All right. I should have put the verses up on the screen so you guys can follow up. Colossians chapter 3, I'm going to read a couple times that you guys, some of you guys don't have your Bibles, some of you guys, uh, the verses are on the screen. Colossians chapter 3. This is Paul after he's a Christian. He's writing to, to uh, the church. He's writing to the church, and he's telling them what their life should be like after they encounter Christ. We know what Paul was like before he encountered Christ. Right? He was persecuting Christians. He was a totally different person. That's how he identified himself. That's how people identified him. Now this is his life after Christ. He's explaining it and what it should be like to these other Christians. He says, let me get my water before I start. All right. Okay. It says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the, righteous, at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also appear with him in glory. Okay? Read it one more time. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your heart on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is, who is life, uh, your life appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. And I think, I think this is something a lot of a lot of Christians miss. Okay. See, we have our lives before Christ, then we have our life with Christ, and this whole idea of with Christ. 
is what I want to talk to you guys about. This is the meat. This is what I want you guys, if you guys want to understand anything else, I want you guys to grab this point. With Christ is an action, okay? It should be your identity. It should be who you are. It should describe who you are. Now, I think what happens in the church a lot of times, people, they, you know, they'll, they'll come, they'll say, I want to be with Christ. They'll put a nail on the, Christ, uh, in the cross, and they'll say, okay, I'm with Christ now. All right? I'm with him. I'm in proximity. I'm close to him. And then they'll, they'll, they'll go on with their life, and they miss something. Okay? You guys know what a prepositional phrase is? Yeah. How many, how many English, uh, give me a prepositional phrase. I can't say yes, you know what it is, and then not. Dude, I, got a, I got an English major over here. Zach, give me a preposition. On the house. What? On the house. On the house. So which word is the preposition? On. On. So with, of, what are some other prepositions? About. There's like, I don't know, there's only like 36 or something like that prepositions in the English language. But I want to I draw your attention to one of them. The word with is a preposition. Small word, big meaning. We're in Colossians chapter 3. Three times we see this word with, all right? I'm going to teach you guys some Greek. Are you guys up for learning some Greek? Yes? yes? No? Some of you are like, you got to be kidding me. I'm on spring. Winter, what's it? Winter, winter break? Some of you are like, I'm not on a winter break. How many of you are on winter break? Nope. Everyone hates that group over there. Forget you guys on winter break. That's, that's terrible. None of us are on winter break. I don't know winter break. But we're bringing you back to school anyway. All right, so we've got this word with. If you're with me, Colossians chapter 3, we see this, it says, you have been raised with Christ, okay? Your life is now hidden with Christ in God, then you will also appear with him in glory, okay? Now the word with, in Greek, there's two different words for the word with. There is the word, put it up there, there's mea and there's su. Go to the next slide. Mea and su. So mea means... May means accompaniment or proximity. So, so if I went on a date with Julie, uh -huh. I would be I would be next. I was she was with me. Okay, she's next to me. Okay, Noel, come come right here. All right, so Noel is now with me because she's standing up. She's standing with me. Do you understand what that means? With to be with someone. Okay, go sit down. Good job. But in the Greek language, that's not what we have in Colossians. In the Greek language, the word with is su, okay, which means union, indicate, in, which indicates completeness, uh, completelessness, okay? So if I were to go on a, a date with Julie, I would be physically with her. But if some guy started hitting on her and said, whoa, 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 she's, she's with me, okay, I'm with this girl, and that would mean a whole different context. Not that she's physically with me, okay, but she's with me in the sense that we're, we're together, okay? Now, if you don't get that, I have our little illustration for you. So we got the word meta and we got the word soon. Alright? So I brought some peanuts and peanut butter to help you guys understand this. So I got peanuts. These peanuts in my hand are with each other in a meta way. Okay? They are with this one is with this one. You guys understand that? They're in close proximity. They're together. You got it so far? Peanut butter, on the other hand. Hmm, so good. Peanut butter is together in a soon way. Okay? You guys understand the difference? Can you, can you pull a peanut out of this peanut butter, Noel? No, you can't. That's ridiculous. Because they're so unified, they're so unified, they're so together that they're inseparable. Okay? And I think what happens a lot of times... Young people, and people, you know, it doesn't matter what your age, but a lot of people come to God and they say, yeah, you know what, I want to be with God. And they act like peanuts. Okay? And they say, I want to be with God. And they, they get practicing. They go to church and say, I'm pretty close to God because I'm, I'm at church. God's there. So I'm, I'm with God in a made way. Okay? You do Christian things, and you think you're with God, but that's missing the, the, the very definition of what with God means. If you read it with the, the soon definition, you have been raised in union with Christ. You are so together that your identities are inseparable. Okay? And I think a lot of people miss that. Your identity should be so fixed and intertwined with Christ that they are inseparable. You and Christ should be like peanut butter, not two peanuts. 
You guys understand me? I can't, I, I, that's three illustrations. That's the, the girlfriend one, and the peanut butter one, and the Greek one, okay? If you don't get that point right there, and I hope from whenever, now on, whenever you eat a peanut butter sandwich, you be like, man, I want my relationship with God to be like that. I want to be like peanut butter, all right? I want to be so mixed and crushed and entangled with God that my identity is in Him. I cannot separate my identity with God, okay? We're going to move on. I'm going to get some water before I do because drinking peanut butter was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> Eating peanut butter. I'm just checking to make sure you guys are paying attention. You guys are. So, say, okay, Pastor Matt, I understand that, you know, a lot of, a lot of times... People have a time, hard time doing this, you know, with God, identifying so much, being so passionate, having their very actions just define who you are and your actions with God. So how do you, how do you do that? I love this verse. You go on to Colossians, uh, chapter three, verse five. He says, "Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly, excuse me, to your earthly nature." Sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self, who you used to be, with its practices, and then you have now put on the new self, which is being renewed. And knowledge in this image of its creator. Here there is no Greek, Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, slave or free, but Christ is all and, in, and is in all. He's saying, you know what? You are no longer defined by your ethnicity, Greek, Jew. It doesn't matter. You are defined by one thing, and that's your relationship with Christ. That is who you are now. It says, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Okay? And uh, in 2006, the New Orleans Saints almost won the Super Bowl. They got real close. They weren't supposed to do very well. They got, uh, they got, you know, they didn't win the Super Bowl. And you still get awards, second place awards, you know, most improved. I don't know what they got, but they, they got these awards probably for the, it was whatever AFC or NFC. I'm not a big football. It was Saints, AFC, or NFC. I know what you guys don't care. Good. I don't care either. I just didn't want to offend a football fan. So if there's nothing in here, then it doesn't matter. Okay. But the New Orleans Saints. They went into this next season, and they had these awards. Before they started their season, you know what they did? They got a coffin, and they put all their awards from the previous year, in, and they buried it before they started. They said, you know what? Who we were last year isn't going to define us this year. We can't focus on who we used to be. We are new people now, and we're going to bury those old, those old uh, awards, whatever they were. I don't know, middle medals, rings, whatever they got. They buried them. Now, I think it would be pretty cool to bring a coffin at the end and have you guys bury stuff, but that would probably been weird to go to, uh, you know, ask a guy for, hey, can I borrow a, a, a coffin? I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. But that's what the <laughs> New Orleans Saints have a little bit more clout than I do. They can, they can just get a, a coffin whenever they want, all right? But that's what they did. They buried their old selves, okay? See, each and every one of us has this... this uh, earthly nature. It's called the sin nature. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this. All right? But that's that flaw that, that, that Paul was dealing with. That, that little flaw in each and every one of us that's going uh, to reap huge, huge repercussions in our life if we fail to deal with it. Okay? And we have this, this sin nature. And uh, man, you, you look at these things and, and Paul's saying, look in there. You know, Look at the things. If you guys have your Bible, what, 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 did Paul, what did Paul list that we needed to kill? You guys with me? Do you have your Bibles? Shout them out. Sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust. See, I mean, our, our generation is plagued by sexual immorality, but it wasn't just today. You know, everyone's always said, oh my goodness, today it's so bad. Yeah, guess what? 2,000 years ago in this church, it wasn't... It wasn't wasn't any better. All right? you have to, but we have to kill that. It says anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Man, I, I, I can't tell you how often I hear stories of, of people in this youth group, and I hear them talking. I'm like, whoa, 
You know, it's not it's not quite as quite as uh, crazy as the you know the honeymoon dude that was going nuts. But you know, you hear this stuff and, you, and it's like, wait a minute, it, you know, we're, our actions are not lining up with who Christ has told us to be, right? And I think um, we can't kid ourselves. You know what it says in there? And uh, I was in, I, I just got out of an Old Testament class, and the Old Testament. It's big on the wrath of God, and, it, and, and that gets downplayed a lot in the New Testament because we love to talk about God's grace and his mercy and his patience. And I love all that, and I'm not saying it's not true. But it says, because of all these, the wrath of God is coming. So you can't, you can't um, deny that because of our sin, we are going to experience punishment and, and the wrath of God on earth. It does bring huge consequences, okay? And that's the truth. That's the truth of God's word. Understand? So what we have to do in response to that, if we are going to identify ourselves with Christ, if we are going to be like peanut butter, all right, we're going to have to put to, to death our old self, who we used to be. Who Paul said, it in, in, as we, we read in Acts, who he, he told us he, he put that person to death. He was no longer that person. Okay? Now, I know what you're saying. How do, oh, how do we do that? It's so hard. We have this sin nature. I deal with it. I struggle with it. How do, I, how do I deal with that? How do I put those things to death? I want to. I want to follow God. I want to be like peanut butter. I really do. I really do. And I, and I believe that most of you guys do do that. So how do we do that? Last point. Colossians chapter 3, um, verse, verse 12. He says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion and Kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, close yourself. That's an awesome analogy. It isn't the first time this, this word close is used in the Bible. It's actually used quite a bit. Uh, very first time it's used all the way back, beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter 3. Adam and Eve sin. They, they don't know how to deal with their sin. They don't know how to deal with their shame. They, they're like, we're naked, we're scared, we're afraid, we're running around. And God clothes them. He gives them garments to clothes. And that's not just a, a nice thing he did. But that, that, was, um, that was speaking. That was um, a reference to what he would do to all believers. That he would, he would provide the means for us to close ourselves. Okay? Now, if you're, going, if you're going on a trip, let's say you're going to go climb K2, you know, a big mountain or something like that. What are you going to wear? Climb the mountain, what are you going to wear? Sweatpants and a hoodie. You're dead. You only got up to 8,000 feet. You're dead. Sweatpants and a hoodie. What are you going to wear? A helmet? All right. Sounds good. I'll take a helmet. You're going you're gonna to wear some thermal underpants. You're going to get some hotties. You're going to oxygen tank. I, I mean, I guess that's not really clothes. That's more equipment. But sure. All right. You're going you're gonna to get maybe your North Face on, like seven of them, like the quintuple layer, and they all zip into one, that zips into another, that zips into another, and you're going to walk around like this, and you have big snow pants, and you snow boots, you're going to have to clothe yourself for, for, for the mission, right? So, I don't think our walk with Jesus Christ is any different. Each and every day, we have to clothe ourselves. It says, what do we clothe ourselves with? All right? Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. And I love, I love the analogy of Clothing yourself, because clothing yourself is something you have to do each and every day. You're going to say, Pastor Matt, I, I, I get what you're saying. I want to follow God. I want to be like peanut butter. I want to put to death my old self. I want to put to death who I used to be. And I want to put these new clothes on. Where do I get it? Where do I get the clothes? Okay, You can't go to the mall. They don't sell them. Right? You can't clothe. Well, if, unless you sponsor the child, you could, I guess, literally clothe yourself with compassion. How many people have a compassion t-shirt in here? Is ready? Everyone missed that analogy. A bunch of when we went on a summer trip, everyone had a t-shirt that said compassion. So I was never mind. <laughs> Forget it. I know it. Really? Who said that? I know. I appreciate you saying. So, so forget that analogy. All right, but we have to close ourselves. Each and every day you have to close ourselves. Alright? How do you do that? Each and every day you're gonna have to spend time in the word. You're gonna have to spend time in prayer. You're gonna have to spend time with other believers, keeping each other accountable, okay? See, who you used to be isn't going to go away if you don't do anything to change it. 
If you do all the same things you used to do, you're not going to change who you are. You're going to stop be someone who's saying, I'm, I'm, you're going to be like the guy in the National Park who's going crazy and saying, yeah, I'm a Christian. And you, you're, you think you're with God because you're standing next to him. But you're not together with him. See, Scripture says that, that God gives us his Holy Spirit. See, we can't, nothing we can do. We can't follow rules. We can't, you know, we're going to fall short if we, if we think following rules to follow rules out of uh, the goodness of our heart is going to get us anywhere. That's going to help, that's going to make us fall short, okay? The only way we're going to be able to close ourselves is through the power of the Holy Spirit, through prayer, through God beckoning us to him, all right? And you are to be so together with God that that becomes your identity, all right? The band wants to come up. We're going to kind of, we're going to end tonight in a time of worship and reflection, okay? Um, It's real critical, and I'm real concerned that you guys understand your actions as believers will ultimately dictate who you are in your relationship with Christ. Right? And James says, don't be hearers of the word, be, be doers of the word. Okay? Anything else is, is to fall short in your faith. Now, I'm not saying you, by doing works, that's how you're saved. But your attitude should reflect. Your actions should reflect Christ in your life. I want to read a couple. Um, I never use my notes. I skip seven pages. I want you guys to stand up. I want you guys. I want you guys to listen as I ask you these questions. As as you think about your identity. As we started, you wrote who you were on that paper. Some of you, most of you. You kind of wrote who you were, what you did, how it defined your life, okay? I'm suggesting that you guys need to be defined and identified through your relationship with Christ. Not next to Christ, with, together. Soon, that's the Greek word. Totally different than standing next to Christ. Being close to Christ. Totally and completely intertwined. I want to ask you a few questions. I want you guys to think about these. Think about your heart. How often are you saddened by people in need? Do you desire to show kindness to others? How do you demonstrate concern that other people, people's needs are met? Do you struggle with anger? Or are you pretty much a gentle person? Is it easy to you forgive or do you hold grudges? These are your actions. Do they reflect that of Christ? Do they reflect the, the clothes that Jesus wants to put on you? How about your mouth? What's your speech like? What words do you use? What's, your, what's in your, your vocabulary? How do you tell your, your friends you're concerned with them? When was the last time you said something that cheered up one of your friends? What are your conversations about? Think about it. Any given day, what are your conversations about? Do they even involve God? Do you even bring them up? How do you build up your friends to encourage them? Or are you someone who always tears them down? That's just your words. What about your hands? What do you do with your time? What do you do with your resources? Do your actions identify you with Christ? What do you do to help other people who are in need? What have you done for someone to show kindness to a friend or even a family member? Have you intentionally acted in a way that demonstrates a servant's attitude? Was the last place you went to help someone out? And uh, what, I, what I don't want to do, I don't want to make you feel guilty and, and say you guys aren't bad people because you're not being good enough. But I want you guys to to think. The first in uh, 2 Corinthians 12. I hope it's there.
There, I'm sorry, it's 13. There it is. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. It says, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. I'll read it one more time. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5. Examine yourselves inside to see whether you are in faith. Test yourselves. Do, uh, do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. See, my, my goal isn't to make you feel guilty and feel bad, but it's a good biblical practice to examine yourself. Take a look. I'm not perfect. I looked at those questions and I said, man, when's the last time I, I tried to be a servant to my wife, to my family, in ministry? When's the last time I've done that? When's the last time my actions have identified myself with Christ? So again, I, I don't want you guys to feel guilty or bad, but man, examine your heart. Examine yourself. Where are you at tonight? I want you guys to be able to respond. That's why we did worship at the, at the end. I want you guys to examine your hearts. I'm going to pray, and then Derek's going to lead us in a few songs. tonight humbled. God, we, we confess that all of us, we struggle with selfishness, this sin nature that, that just propels us to want to do what's only best for us, what only feels good for us, God. Your word says, put to death that sin nature. Cast it off, God. I pray right now that you would just uh, convict us in our heart. Are there things that Paul talked about? Is there uh, sexual immorality? Is there language? Is there anger? Is there hatred? Is there selfishness in our heart that you want to deal with? God, furthermore, we don't want to just stop there by getting rid of it. But we want to replace it with something else. We want to close ourselves in righteousness. We want to close ourselves with compassion with gentleness, with patience, God. Ultimately, all those things are bound by one thing, and that's love. Love is the opposite of selfishness. The complete opposite of selfishness is love, God. I pray that that would reign in our hearts, that we would become a people that love just like you loved us first. God, I pray that 180s would, would happen in this room, just like Paul was going around persecuting Christians. You turned the... God, it's the greatest miracle of all. You turn what was meant for evil, you turn it to good. And you've done it time and time again. God, I pray that you would speak to our hearts. You would change us. God, that we wouldn't be a people running after, following a bunch of rules, God, but in our hearts, you would live in us. We would be so intertwined with you. That we look so different. That when people see our actions, they can identify us with Christ. God, we love you and we praise you tonight. I pray that you are lifted up and glorified through our praise tonight. We ask this in your name.